morning I had really great intentions this morning of like go 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 up early up to the plot do this do this do this do this none of it's happened and it's just getting later and later and I still haven't got up to the allotment anyway I'm in the shed because I need to take the good secateurs with me today because my main job that's on my list that's written on the chalkboard on the door of the shed is I've got to chop back the bay tree so there is a bay tree right as you come into our plot. It's like a multi-stemmed thing. And every year about this time, I chop it right back to a ball shape. So a couple of years ago, it was just an enormous like hairy monster, you know, all the way down to the bottom. And I lifted the canopy to kind of give it some naked legs and made the top into a ball shape. And I just do it once a year. I give it a really good chop back once a year. And then it produces masses and masses of beautiful, like large, lush, fresh, gorgeous bay leaves more bay leaves than one could ever need yeah so that's my main task for this morning i've got to get myself into gear uh i need the secateurs that's these chaps i've got to take these ones with me because all the secateurs we've got in the shed are uh well they leave a lot to be desired basically um and and there's only so much a bit of WD-40 can do for them. So it is, it is proper secateurs day. Right. Come on, Jesse. Let's go. So this is the bay tree. You can kind of see in there somewhere the sort of shape that I want to get it back to. I know that somebody is going to say, why don't you just use a hedge trimmer? I know that that question is going to come up, but Firstly, I really don't like hedge trimmers. If I had three miles of really close crop topiary to do or uh, really fine leafed hedge work, a hedge trimmer is absolutely fine. But I don't have that. I've got a couple of very small trees that need kind of pruning up. And I really don't like what hedge trimmers do to particularly large leafed things like bay trees. They just mush the whole lot and chop all the leaves in half and it just looks really untidy and it's just not great. So I always do it with secateurs and loppers. Secondly, this bay tree has been chopped back to this same point repeatedly, repeatedly, and it's really quite dense in there. And a lot of the stems are really thick. Hedge trimmer just wouldn't do the job. And the way that bay tree grows, it tends to send up these big, long spikes. And because I only do this once a year, the spikes themselves are really quite large. So if I was gonna use a hedge trimmer, I'd have to be doing it all the time rather than leaving it just to do it once a year. And I don't want to do that. So it's all about the secateurs for me. I'm just not a fan of a hedge trimmer. <laughs> but I just thought I would head that question off first because I know what's coming. Okay, well, I haven't got very much done this morning, to be honest, but uh, it was a bit of a late start, so uh, it's lunchtime. <laughs> so ceasing all action, I'm just gonna make some lunch. We've got some bits and pieces to pick. It's just gonna be standard allotment lunch, but um, I'm gonna use some turnips today. And we've got a bit of coriander growing in the carrot bed. So yeah, a bit of a mishmash, but uh, yum, basically just yum. So I've got a couple of these really lovely baby turnips. Oh, wow. That is a blunt knife. <laughs> yep that isn't really going to do me any good at all that is a really tender young turnip and uh okay let's try and do something about that
Okay, take two. Is that any better? Oh yeah, well, it's an improvement anyway. Let's get this stuff chopped up. got a couple of courgette cores here which uh the girls absolutely love so hey girlies look what i got i got something exciting hmm? fancy a bit of that yeah come on rube <laughs> i know you don't have to look so suspicious flo bit charred of course and also i've got a spring onion. Chop, chop, chop. Sorry about that, uh, camera ran out of battery. Um, we didn't get a great deal more done actually than eating lunch and uh, did a bit of pottering, did a bit of watering in the greenhouse, that kind of thing. And uh, <laughs> now we're back. So not a great deal done today, but I've got to go and sort my face out and change my clothes because I'm going out. <laughs> and I'm gonna take you with me because it is relevant. Annie, what? I'm actually going to a garden centre that I used to work in for a friend's birthday. I didn't work there for a friend's birthday. I used to work there, um, but it's a friend's birthday who still works there. And um, Annie, shush. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm going to Rassels and uh, I'm going to take you with me. I'm hoping that it's not going to be too dark by the time I get there because I'd like to take you on a bit of a look around because it's an absolutely magic, magic place. If it is too dark, I'll just have to take you there again another time because it's definitely worth a look around. Anyway, I gotta sort my face out, change my clothes. I'll see you at Rassels. Welcome 
welcome to Russell's. Russell's is a little independent garden centre on the north end of the Earl's Court Road. And I worked here on and off for years and years and years. And it's a spectacular place, full of amazing bits and pieces like this. Look at this wisteria. It's basically holding up one side of the building. <laughs> it is huge. I'll put links to their Facebook page and things in the notes underneath the video today. But I'm going to have to come back and bring you with me and do a proper little tour around because it's an amazing place. But there's a lot of tree cover in the rest of the garden centre and the light levels are just too low to take you around properly today. But we'll have a bit of a nose. We have the champagne outside. <laughs> I haven't actually been here since before COVID. So let's have a bit of a look around. Let's start with the shop. So the indoor bit's mostly house plants now. There used to be quite a big floristry section, but I think it's just not, it's just not viable anymore. So we are house plant rich in here. Your hat looks spectacular, Rick. <laughs> so this place is an absolute gem. It doesn't have a massive footprint, but it's basically got anything you could ever want out of a garden centre in it. Do you remember me talking about how much I absolutely love mulberry trees? And the mulberry tree that I first met ever was the one here at the back of the garden centre. It is above me right now and it is gorgeous. It's all gnarly and sort of a bit collapso and it's growing through a hedge on that side, but it is so lovely. I love how bumpy the ho it's just, it's not even particularly huge. I mean, it's an old tree, but it's just, it's the fact that it's growing so kind of sporadically and splayed all over the place. It is not a neat, tidy tree. It just wants to be involved in everything. I love it. Right, crisis, we're out of fizz. We better head back. I'm sorry that this gloomy light doesn't make much fun viewing, but uh, I'm definitely going to come back in the daylight and give you a tour. I've been meaning to come here for such a long time with you, but obviously COVID and such like hasn't made it that easy. So um, now we're coming out of all that mess. Uh, we'll be back here in the sunshine or at least in the daylight. And uh, I'll give you a good tour because although it is a small footprint, it's just got so much packed in here. And for being in central London, it is quite remarkable. Oh, hello. Look at that. Oh, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. <laughs> right, okay. I, this is meant to be a social occasion. I'm gonna put the camera away and um, go and have a chat. again um, mainly because when I didn't get to finish filming what we were doing with the bay tree uh, yesterday um, what we did oh hang on I haven't even got them up hold on so after I pruned the bay tree uh, we had obviously all the branches and everything all over the floor and and mum and I stripped the bay of uh, a huge number of leaves so normally like if you've got a bay tree you'll know like you can never use enough of the bay leaves <laughs> you just have acres an endless endless supply of bay leaves and particularly if you're uh, pruning it and you just get these huge branches anyway normally i would leave the bay leaves on the branches you know still attached and hang up the branches somewhere like in the netting shed or in the um or in like the larder cupboard here or something somewhere dry and let them dry naturally but what we've actually done is we've just stripped them off i've got this huge big oh actually <laughs> It's in a Russell's bag. Um, but yeah, we've just stripped off a whole bag worth of the individual leaves. So they're perfect like this. Isn't that gorgeous and glossy? And what I'm doing is putting them in the dryer. So I've got some here, which I've dried overnight. So when we got home yesterday, I put them in there and they're looking really good. Let me show you. Just 
piled them all in in here and they are looking really dry really dry but they've kept their color you see how green they are like often if you dry bay leaves they go kind of a brown color but these and look how dry they are like proper crispy crispy dry <laughs> the dryer has done a good job and it's worked on all the different levels yep still got a lot to go though so i've done about a third of them in that session and i'll just take them out and then get these ones in And the reason that I'm going to be drying like more than anybody could sort of humanly use in a lifetime is because I'm going to be making bay leaf powder out of them. So you need them to be really, really dry and then put them in the spice blender. And what's really nice about that is that if you're making a stew that's going to kind of cook down for two hours or something, throwing a nice bay leaf in there just infuses it with flavour. It's just wonderful. Like it's the taste of a slow cooked stew. But if you don't have two hours, if you just put a little bit of bay leaf powder in the top, you get the same effect because it doesn't have to leach out of the leaf it's just in there like <laughs> it's a bit of a cheat but you know it's really good and it also means that you can compress like a whole bag of leaves like this into a little jar like that and you get the same oomph so you get to feel like you're using up the leaves as well because that's really annoying when you've cut all the leaves off and they're all perfectly good you know they're fantastic leaves i mean look at these some of these are absolutely beautiful perfect gorgeous new year's growth like this year's growth they're just lovely but you just can't use them so i make the bay leaf powder i've got a little bit left over from last year actually let me just show you that be easier we have uh where is it uh, it's normally at the bottom here somewhere there it is so yeah nice bit of bay leaf powder yum yum scrum i'm going to make myself a really huge jar of this out of um what we've got in the dryer at the moment okay so one other thing while i'm talking about kitcheny things i am making a bit of a trial run on the sambuca so so i picked the berries off the black lace elder the other day we're just going to do a bit of a flashback because i couldn't fit it in last week's vlog I picked them all off the stems and I just froze them immediately but some I put in just some vodka just to see if we can get that sambuca -y feel to it so let's just have a smell Oh yeah. Yeah, that is smelling a lot like Sambuca. So once I've given this a bit of a try, I think I need to leave it, I think like five days or so. I will, this has got no sugar in it or anything at the moment. This is just elderberries, star anise and vodka. And I will have a bit of an experiment with this and see how I get on. And then once I've perfected it, I will tell you all about it because beauty but obviously if you find elderberries that are like ready you can just freeze them or dry them like one or t'other i know that a lot of the recipes do actually call for dried elderberries but i thought i'd give it a go with fresh uh, i don't really know what i'm doing it's a bit of a it's a bit of an experiment really it's the first year i've ever harvested my own elderberries though so i think i'm allowed to play around a bit yeah but enough chat and enough smelling sambuca at this time of the morning let's go to the allotment <music> It really is. 
see my shadow. Right, these are the sticks that we took the majority of the leaves off yesterday, so they're ready to be chopped up. And these are ones that I've put to one side because we're going to make a little fence at the bottom of the plot. And uh, some of these are really lovely and flexible. So I'm going to hold on to these and use them as kind of weaving sticks. That's the plan. Well, it is a beautiful morning. Beautiful morning. Beauty girls, I'm beauty girls. Morning, girlies. Morning, morning, girlies. Hey, Rube, what are you doing over there in the sunshine? Is it warm in there? So the tomatoes that I've left in here are ripening up pretty well actually. Some of these ones are ready to come off. And the blight doesn't seem to have kind of kicked in fully. Some of them looking really nice. Temperature 43.8. It got two. Mm -mm. And this one, which is the big beefy boy, is uh, ripening up quite nicely. <sighs> Sun's out, gorgeous. And I've got some corn for the girls, um, which they've seen. They spotted me with it and uh, they're pretty excited. Oh, pretty excited. Let's go and give it to them. Are you ready, girlies? What have we got? Is it exciting? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on. Come on, sausage. You're missing out, girlie. Come on. I think that counts as a success. Hey girls, are you happy girls? Right, okay, what is on the cards, hey girls? What are we gonna do today? I think mum is busy chopping up the last of the sticks of the bay tree yesterday. Um, there's loads of stuff I need to chop back, but most of it is things that need to wait till like either it's full autumn and they've lost their leaves or they're dormant in the winter. So that list is growing, but can't really do anything about it at the moment. Actually, one of the first things I probably need to do is uh, pick some more bolotti beans because um, there's loads more dry. So I'll go and do that. Then I think we're going to assess the leak bed. You know, if you watched the plot tour last week, um, I was saying that uh, some of them have bolted. So I'm going to just take off the cover on that and have a good old look what's going on in there and give them a bit of a feed. That's something that he's doing. Let's have a bag for picking. You're soaked. I know. <laughs> I travel with that. I put the, the sprinkler on and I couldn't get it right. <laughs> so I got quite wet. Yeah, so. drenched. <laughs> I'm standing here in the sun trying to dry out. <laughs>
Right, next on the list. This is the very top bed of the allotment, like where you first walk in. And we're gonna put this one over to green manure. But I have, last year, I picked up some absolute bargain packs from, um, where was it? It was when the garden centre was closing down, wasn't it? Yeah. And they were like 20p a pack. And this one is just a, like a mix of, it's got rye grass, vetch, uh, Fiji maple peas, that kind of thing in it. And I'm just going to do this whole top bed and just leave that over. The reasons that we're going for um, putting green manure in is that they do quite a lot of different jobs, green manure, but this one in particular is going to just add like organic matter to the soil. So once it's come up and then in the spring, we'll just chop it down and like leave it on top like a mulch. But it, what it also does is it's going to stop the soil leaching over the winter. So during the winter, because we've got really sandy soil, it rains, obviously, and it just washes all the nutrients straight through. If you've got some kind of plants growing and green covering the surface of the soil really helps with that. You can also cover it with plastic, but I'm keener on the green stuff method. <laughs> so we're going to sew this into this bed now. There's a couple of bits and pieces in here that um, I'm going to leave. So this is the bed that's got the summer savory in it. So that's obviously staying. And we've got a couple of radicio, which are coming on quite nicely right in the middle of it. So I'm going to leave them. There's three of a surviving, I think I must have planted about 15 in here, but there's only three surviving of a uh, perpetual spinach. I'm going to move it. Uh, if it doesn't survive, it doesn't survive, but um, it really needs to be covered because the pigeons are just devouring it. And just having three plants in the end, it's not really worth covering or putting a big cover on them. So I'm just going to move them down where there's other things being covered and see if they survive. If they do, they do. Marvellous. If they don't, oh well. And so some green manure. Right. So like I said, the one that I'm using in here is just a mix. It's got, yeah, rye and vetch and that sort of thing in it. And you can see when you are sowing the mixed ones that you have um, really quite obvious different seeds in there. You can tell which ones are the peas pretty easily. This whole packet will do about 2.5 square metres, which is kind of roughly what this bed is. So I'm just going to do the whole packet. I'm going to rake it over with my mini rake. I find this is really good once you've sown seed this little tiny rake because the prongs are really far apart. It doesn't tend to catch too much soil and if you've raked it beforehand and it's quite loose once you've sown the seed and you re-rake it with this it just kind of covers the seed rather than drags it around the bed.
Right, I've got this whole bed of leeks and we've got a bit of a mixed situation going on under this cover. We've got the EnviroMesh on there for Allium leaf miner. We always have to cover the alliums that are in the ground for a long time. So from on top of the netting, I can see that quite a few of them have bolted, which is pretty unusual. I never normally have a problem with leeks bolting, but you can see there's one just here on the end that has bolted. It's got a big old flower spike on it. So when you've got things like hard neck garlic, when that bolts, when you get the flower stem on, then you can eat them and they're lovely and tender. Not so with leeks. It just makes the whole thing really tough. I mean, you can eat the flower spike like you would scapes, I suppose, but the actual leek itself ends up with a really hard core and it's not much good for eating. But you can see quite clearly, this is three different varieties of leek like that and they're performing really quite differently. This one in the bottom left is not doing well at all. It's absolutely covered in rust. They're really skinny and scrawny and almost all of them have bolted. So I'm making a bit of an executive decision. We could do with a bit more space underneath the EnviroMesh and uh, I'm just going to take all of these ones out. I can't tell you what variety they were just yet because I can't remember, but I know that in here I have got Musselbra, Autumn King, no, Autumn Giant, not Autumn King, Autumn Giant, and one other. And the other one was one that I hadn't grown before, but I've got a feeling this might be the Musselbra, which is really strange because Musselbra normally performs really well. Um, but that's the case. A couple of the other ones have bolted as well, so I'm just going to take all of them out and then I'm going to just tidy them up a bit and give them a really good feed. That's, um, that's my strategy. And then I'm going to use this little bit of EnviroMesh space for something else. Feed I'm going to be using is the seaweed feed. So I've got a little bit left over from the one that I refilled in Teddington smidge in there that should be enough to do the whole bed i'll give it a couple of goes in the watering can and um, hopefully that will sprightly them up a little bit because uh, they're not looking so good what are we doing what are we doing lovely girls beauty girls I'm just going to do the watering. I don't know what's happened to this hat. It's like it's been folded somehow. It's got like, oh well. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's a bit late in the day to be realizing my hat's wonky. So I'm just gonna head home in a minute. Uh, oh, I do need to pick some basil before we go though because we've got a couple of really snaz tomatoes to eat and uh, it's quite a rarity this year that we've got a couple of real big ones. So we're gonna be having them for dinner. Not just them, obviously, but they're gonna be with it and I need some basil to go with them. So I'm gonna go and pick some basil and then we're gonna head off and I will see you tomorrow. I don't know, I can't see the recording. <laughs> How can you do that? No, I have to cut it off. That was, that was much stronger than I was expecting. <laughs> Cheers, chaps. Mm. It's gin and tonic, but I've got, um, oh, you know, like bottled lemon juice. I just put like a splash on that and uh, rather a lot of it came out, hence the colour. And also it's quite, uh, makes your eyes sparkle. Definitely makes your eyes sparkle. Well, that was a pretty good week. I'm really, really chuffed I got to take you to Rassels, even if it was just for like a tiny, tiny little glimpse. I'm definitely going to take you around there, like properly have a good look around because there's so much to see there. It's a really fantastic spot. I've put, if you do live in London or particularly West London, I'll put the details of where it is and their Facebook page and things underneath because have a look. It's funny because even people who live really nearby it, it's on the Earl's Court Road, but somehow they just don't know there's a garden centre behind there because it's like a front fascia of a shop in a garden square and then people just don't know there's all that space behind there. So I'll put the details underneath if you're interested in going and have a wander around yourself. But I am going to take you there, but it won't be this week. It's going to have to be in like a couple of weeks time I think because I've got a manic week coming up <laughs> it's funny like in the last couple of weeks and even though like all the Covid restrictions all like stopped gosh how long ago was it now it must be at least a month more than a month been ages anyway like things are just like slowly ramping back up to how they used to be and I've got a nuts week ahead of me this week so the most exciting thing on that list is that tomorrow mum and I are going to be at Chelsea Flower Show so that's really good we go every year but these tickets are the ones that we bought from uh 2020 so spring 2020 it's going to be amazing to see it um not as spring flowers because chelsea's got such a distinctive look about it to see it like in with autumn colors is going to be yeah it's going to be really interesting i'm really looking forward to it and the weather forecast says it's not going to be raining it's going to be like sun and clouds so just about perfect really looking forward to that then in the evening I've got college and then Wednesday I'm going to a college, not the college I'm going to myself, but another college nearby to have a look at a project where they're putting a like an allotment garden together in the college grounds for growing vegetables and growing edibles. And they're going to try and bring together the horticulture and the people studying catering and cooking and try and bring that together. And I think that sounds like a really exciting project. So I'm quite looking forward to having a look around there. Thursday's mum's birthday. <laughs> Friday is my niece's birthday, so I'm going down to Hengsilmere for lunch. And then Saturday, I know, I know, what is this about? I'm used to having nothing to do for like 20 day stretches other than like allotmenting, like this is a nuts week. And then Saturday, um, I'm possibly meeting up with um, two known faces from on here, uh, but that's not confirmed yet. So um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But if that does happen, that'd be excellent. Which means that then I've got to film the whole vlog on Sunday, edit it for Monday, ready for Tuesday. It's all go. And somewhere in there, I've got to do a Thursday video. And I was thinking this Thursday was going to be the one that's about uh, green manure. Because we're kind of coming up on that now. I don't know. We'll wait and see. Could be this week. Could be next week. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to get it out before... Because obviously field beans you can plant all the way up till November, there's no kind of hurry for them. But some of the other ones you need to kind of get started now if you're going to do them. 
Ooh, decisions, decisions, decisions. I'll see if I can fit it in. It might just be a really quick video. Me just like in information about green manure. Mm. I'll have a think. So yeah, bit of a manic week coming up. Uh, and I'm not used to it, chaps. I'm not used to this fast pace of life. Mm. So anyway, love to everybody. I um, hope you have a fantastic week. I uh, hope it's not as busy as mine, or if it is as busy as mine, that it's all things that you enjoy doing. Um, but it does mean that not a great deal of gardening is going to get done this week. I'm just going to finish this gin and tonic, and then I'm probably going to stroll up to the allotment and have a chat with the girls. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful evening, so I'm probably going to go and sit up there for a while. Um, yeah, so all I've got left to say, chaps, is cheers. Oh, there is one other thing. Um, the last time that I showed my dryer, you know where I've got all the bay leaves, I had loads of questions about which one I'd chosen and everything. It's funny because before I bought one, well I didn't buy one, I was I was bought one for my birthday, but um, we did a lot of kind of deciding which one to go for and I put a question out on Instagram to anybody who had them and whether they recommend them because there's just so many different types out there. I was just like bamboozled by all the different ones. And the one that we ended up going for was not particularly expensive, I think it was about £30. Um, maybe even less than that but it came up repeatedly as people saying like they bought it as the cheap option like thinking they would test it out and then if they really liked drying things they would buy a more expensive one and in the end they just ended up sticking with it because it was fantastic so that's the one I went for I'll put a link to it underneath here but I know that every time I show it I get loads of questions about it so uh, I've put it down there but yeah see you later chaps cheers Boy, is that sharp.